God, our maker, our creator, you have instilled upon in, inside each of us a goodness that is truly in your image. As we gather as servant leaders of this area, we just ask that you truly allow that servant leadership to be part of our inner deliberation so that every thought, every word, that proceeds from us will be truly words and actions that have you as their beginning and you as their final source. Just allow us as we come together to truly be the people that you have called us to be. Bless us and bless all the people that we serve. For this prayer and every prayer we say, Amen. Thank you. Additions to the agenda. We also need to add um, under administration superintendent zoning violation and loan fees. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Zoning violation. We had a call 
um, with a complaint regarding residential usage of a commercial property. We will be sending out a letter. Um, it gives them 30 days to either move or come to file an application to be brought before the Zoning Commission. We don't think the second is going to be an issue. Um, we'll get that letter out ASAP. And um, I've spoken with the property owner. They are aware that they're in violation. They were not aware they were in violation, but they are now aware. So they're looking to get it remediated as quickly as possible. Um, mowing. The recent tax sale, there was a property that the city had mowing fees on. I believe that in the past it has been the policy of council to waive those fees to get the properties back on the tax rolls. Um, I would need a motion to go ahead and do that with this particular sale. Is there just one property? Yes. Out of all of them sold that we oh. have mowing bill here? I only looked at the track 9 and track 10, which were the two that you guys were interested in. In bidding on, and one of them had mowing fees, and the other one did not. But I did not look at the whole list. So, do we want to go ahead and waive any fees that are on any properties that were sold through the sale? Well, I don't think you can do one. Do one of them without doing them all. Yeah, yeah great. Well, that would be better. something that we do each and every time or is that just we go over each time we have a sale? I think that's up to you guys. I know that traditionally they we waived them but I think it would be better to do it with each individual sale. But again, that's up to council.
Uh, playground equipment's up. The uh, dirt's been excavated on the north side of the existing swing set and down in between it and the new playground equipment and that. And we're going to uh, get the spot excavated for the other bleachers for Nick probably tomorrow. Um, then we'll try and make a deal with John to try and help us pour the concrete and whatever the cost of material is and then, you know, whatever he charges us to help, which I, I can't imagine that it would be a lot. But, uh, you know, if it gets out of what my spending limit would be, we may have to decide, you know, in a hurry, maybe a special meeting or something to get it done, unless you want to put it off two more weeks. I think they're working close to town now is the reason I say that. Uh, he just told me to give him a holler when we had it set up, he'd come look. So uh, that's done. The only thing that we don't have, and I've discussed this with Ruben, is the mulch. To fill it, it requires 12 inches of mulch, and we're going to incorporate the swing set back, the original swing set back in with this. And between them, they take about 100 to 110 cubic yards of mulch. Uh, the original cost from Fry and Associates when they bid putting up the equipment and supplying the mulch was $1,750 for the mulch. And that was just to dump it on site. It wasn't to spread it out or anything. It says to be done by others. I called Don Quayle down at Quayle Enterprises south of Pratt, and he does the same thing. And he will send us up, his box trailers hold about 140 cubic yards. If we take uh, one trailer, which would do the South Park and probably a little bit extra, uh, it'd be $19 a yard, a cubic yard, which would come to, uh, I don't know here somewhere if I didn't put my glasses on, uh, $2,660. But if we would take three loads, which we really could, uh, Ruben and I discussed this and all the playground equipment that we have in the north end of town, it's going to take about 400 yards to do the rest of it somewhere close. I don't know how many years it's been since it was filled in, but it's in bad need of being built back up. A lot of places are 10 to 12 inches shallow, uh, plus around the trees that we've done before. It would take all together, we figure, three loads. Uh, three loads would be, uh, if you take that, he'll do $16 a yard instead of 19 would be $6,720 to do all of it. And he'll dump it where we want it. But if we only take one, he's going to charge us $3 a cubic yard more. So then we thought that if we could get uh, maybe the Boy Scouts, the 4 H, some of those which have helped us in the past, we'd put somebody on the loader to shuffle it in if they'll level it out, smooth it out, and that stuff where we didn't have a lot of our labor tied up in it, but we could get some help from the kids to do it. So and it'll be fresh mulch. Right now he doesn't have any. He said if I'd let him know, he'd have it within 10 days. sure because I haven't got it all measured out yet to tell you how many yards it's going to take. Does all that come out of the one one for all the parts or just that one down there? So where do we take the... Well we took scout cabin money out there, did we not?
all we did spend a couple hours with the loader in there, running it in there, dumping it in, and they spread it out. So. also. and that stuff was pretty close to 7000 7500 I believe is what they quoted was it not for front. I had that on my desk and I should have grabbed it and never even crossed my mind. But it seems to me like it was in the $7,500 range to have it erected and have the mulch brought down there and that stuff. So, so it was 5000 just for the erection. So then $1,750, $6,750, and then there was something else on it, I think. So, um, I don't. I, it was the border. It was the, the bumper borders. What it was, Bob? It's like it's like we got around that other. It's like curb stop, parking stop. You know, which it, we can get ours through the county, and I think we can even beat that price there. And by opening this up and tying both of those uh, playgrounds together, we're going to save a third of that and turn around and use it on the new. So we probably and then one side is a basketball court. So we probably won't have sixty feet, maybe at the most. But we will have some concrete costs because of going to that drinking fountain on the north side and then that on the west. But I still haven't been able to talk to Nick about that. I think he probably would cost share on the, the stuff on the west side. They always have, you know, with anything we wanted to do and he's wanted done. So uh, I think he'll cost share on the concrete and stuff on the west side for the other set of bleachers. So we'll be out about six wide by 50 foot long and oh, about... Uh, Seven by fifteen, maybe on concrete, you know, and a little strip north of basketball court. But I'd say five or six yards at the most, so it wouldn't be an extreme amount of money, you know. And then whatever John charges us to help, you know. But I've I've got probably a roll of wire at my farm that I used on a job before I come back to work here that I'll donate for part of that for for uh, uh, down in that in that. Uh, uh, strip along the north side there and whatever else we need we just get a part of a roll at the lumber yard or something you know or find something to put in there to stiffen it up but we don't have a lot of extra costs we bought a little bit of lumber uh, to brace that stuff up and set it now so we probably don't have you know seventy eighty dollars we did rent a skid loader for this week uh, it was six hundred dollars to rent it to shuffle all this around it's so much easier to get in than a backhoe we didn't feel like we could ask somebody to borrow one so uh, we've done that and we'll have it the full week. So, uh, you know, most of the cost we've tried to absorb without taking anything outside if we didn't have to. So, well, I'm glad you guys work together. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's and it's going really well. I mean, we work, you know, we've tried to slow down a little in the afternoons when it's been really hot, but we're going to do a little sprinkle reroute and we're going to have some parts, but we'll get them out of the shop. I mean, you know, to keep the water out of it. That's part of the reason that that sinks down. The way the sprinkler system's designed down there, it was soaking it down, and it just eats it up. It's just wood, you know. And after time, and the kids on the swings, I mean, they kick it out, and pretty soon you got a rut in there this deep. And, and so it's it's going to be an ongoing cost. But we also think I talked with my guys the other day, and when we start chipping trees, when we start cutting trees in the fall and in the winter, if we've got good thick stock that we're chipping, we're going to try and separate it from the stuff that has a lot of little ends and stuff in it. So maybe, you know, we won't have to incur this cost again. Maybe by the time it comes up, we'll have enough buildup where we can keep doing it from that. So anyway, we may not have all of it, but we might be able to cover part of it. Yeah, so I have a good majority of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. So okay. we'll do what we can, you know. Because it's, like I say, it's going to be an every three or four year expense. So as long as we've got kids. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's plenty of them, so there's plenty of playground stuff up there. I mean, there's a lot of area up there in that north park. So. Yeah, we have $25,000 I'd like to know for sure that that could be used for another quarter of the park. I'm 
Well, there's also, I mean, in the parks, there's a capital outlay of $4,500 in the parks department. Did you have that earmarked for something? I have no idea. It looks like there was only. <laughs> Let me find it here again. I mean, I've got a little capital outlay left There's at the end of the year. Initial too, budget was forty five hundred dollars, and it looks like they've used four hundred and twenty four ninety nine year to date. So I mean, that would be. I mean, that'd make up the difference, surely. Think so. I mean, take basically split the bill in three and two thirds out of the that and a third out of the Cornwell. Okay. Because I don't know whether we can use all that in Cornwell yeah. for that. Yeah. But I think that's a good idea. What about the entry way? What does that come out of? Uh down there? No. Oh, five hundred dollars. Right here on the fourth. We never have. That's the problem. Always before it's been decorated by a woman's club or something, you know, since the day we put it in, but now it's not. So. Well, they do it, but we have to pay for the material. Yeah. Uh, I thought we decided we work. We never run the check. Oh, uh, boy. How about if we take out special marks? There's $6,300 in there with the $300 upwards. Doesn't that come out of that? On top of that, I forgot to mention too, when we, I think it was 1995 or 96 when we put all those, when we spaded all those trees in in that north park, we had five left over. And we and we put them in south of the power plant, they're on an open lot south of the power plant. We've we take care of them and water them and that stuff, and now they're at a size where uh, two or three of them have a six-inch caliper on the bottom of them. I mean, they're twenty-foot tall trees. All of them are oaks, and I discussed it with Barry. We'd like to take the rest of those uh, in the fall once it freezes and we can do it. Spade those in over there on the south side of that playground equipment because there isn't any anything to shade that playground at all, like there is in the north part, and that equipment is dark blue. And when it gets hot, I can tell you that it's pretty toasty to even handle, let alone put a kid on to play on it. And we thought that, I, and like I say, I discussed this with Barry to try and lay out around there where, you know, I probably won't live long enough to see it, but one of these days those trees will be big enough that they'll shade that whole play area on that north end. We've discussed it with Nick. It's out of the way of the soccer fields. Uh, it'll help that little park quite a little bit. But we'll have a cost to spade those in in the fall. You know, if you can't find the money, I probably got a capital outlay fund somewhere. It's probably got enough money in the spade. So, big thing is to find a spade big enough right now because it's going to take at least a 60 inch spade, maybe bigger, to do it. So, it's the one that Shane Steinman It's has. too small. I talked to him the other day. He said it's too small. There is one in Great Bend. There's one in Hutchison. And I think there's one in Kinsley. That orangeman that comes and cuts trees and stumps for us once in a while. He has one too. So later in the fall, we'll discuss that cost when the time comes. We're either going to have to spade them in, or we're going to have to cut them down because they'll be too big to handle. They're already not there. But it'll that'll benefit that little park too. So anyway, you want your chair? No, I'm fine. Oh, okay. General fund. Park. Just a rough estimate. I want you to know because he doesn't know for sure until he loads it how much he can get on. So somewhere in that neighborhood. Can you see that again? About not to exceed seven thousand. Not to exceed seven thousand. That should be close.
Is that all you had, Jeff? Well, this envelope that you handed me, I will. Uh, I'll try and study up on this a little bit before council meeting next time because I assume this has been an ongoing cost. Uh, it's the reason we shut that south well down because of contamination, which I don't know how many years that's been, but it was because of diesel fuel, which the tanks set right there for years, and now they're just west of there in a concrete dike. But the cost is about $30,000 for the monitoring, and I, I didn't know anything about it. Okay. It's a two-year deal, but I'll check up on it. I'll let you know next time. Right. Thank you. That's all I am. Last time I was here, we talked about the sidewalk, the uh, ordinance. I reviewed that ordinance and adhered it to uh, state law. And it just about mimics state law. There's one, uh, I guess, one statute that you guys did not adopt. You adopted that ordinance, which has to do with people's ability or citizens' ability to petition council to uh, put in a sidewalk and it's kind of I don't say useless provision but it, it, the statute says that if, if more than 10 citizens come forward with a petition asking you to put a sidewalk across their property that the council may put a sidewalk across their property um, but in, in reviewing the, the statutes and comparing it to the ordinance uh, and, and you have to look back at other times cities in Kansas have attempted to enforce uh, their ordinances and the Supreme Court back in the 50s basically gave the cities, cities the power to uh, complete control over uh, public sidewalks. So in, in your situation where somebody has removed a sidewalk, uh, the city can simply pass a resolution establish that sidewalk or put that sidewalk back in. I guess I don't know the history about why that sidewalk was removed without coming before the council to request a permit to do so. Your, your uh, ordinance does require uh, approval uh, from, the, uh, from the superintendent before the sidewalk can be removed or repaired. So the city wants to put in a sidewalk, the city wants to remove a sidewalk, that's all with the discretion. City adoption of resolution, which is then published. So you're saying we can approve them to take one out, not put one back? Right. You guys get to decide where sidewalks go, essentially. It's probably harder to put one back in. Right. In the interest of full disclosure, property owners on the first street property contacted me and I trusted my memory which is a dangerous thing but I told them they could go ahead and remove that sidewalk. I don't have a problem with it. I don't. I've looked at it and it doesn't look like it was safe anyway and it would be better if there wasn't a sidewalk then because I know they weren't going to spend the money to do it. Should have been one, so I don't have a problem with that. There's a lot of making off to this town, the step over the sidewalk, going up the grass. I feel like it should be taken out. I'll be here to maintain it. In that situation, it says, have the plans have been approved by the city superintendent a permit issue? Um, and I don't, I doubt you guys have a permit to go this to my dad and see you so often. But if, if, if the mayor acting as a Superintendent, because there is no superintendent, and the mayor brings forth a plan, and you guys approve the plan. That's good enough. Do 
you remember Ruben? Just below four hundred dollars. Yeah, it was right under four hundred dollars. Um, old business. Auditors. samples getting sent to the state? Yes. Um, you were going to address the flooring issue? Yeah, um, we had a problem out of the plant that had been kind of ongoing. Uh, before Mel left, we had a little bit of an issue with it, and we thought maybe it was a filter in the chlorinators or something there, so we replaced that and washed it well. As time went on through this month, the chlorine levels slowly dropped and slowly dropped and I did everything in my qualifications that I could replace and through contacting people and it just kept getting farther and farther down. Well, um, Monday I came in and we were about a 0.5 on our residual which is 0.3 higher than illegal. 0.2 is as low as you can get on your residual coming out of the plant going to the public. So I called uh, the Rural Water District Association because they will send people out and it didn't cost you anything. It's free. They send people out if you have problems that you can't fix. He came out, we worked all day, and what it was was when they put the chlorine line in from the chlorine room going to the ejector into our finished water, all they did was just drill a hole through the block wall put that plastic line in there and just staple it pretty much 90 the line in there and we had 
what it had done, the vibrations from the pump, the chlorine pump, had caused it to rub just a little bit on that block because there was no sleeve or conduit or anything in there. And it actually broke the pipe, the plastic hose, and split it. And the reason we were having lower uh, chlorine levels, we were losing our vacuum, and it was actually leaking chlorine into our chlorine room. Not a detectable level because it was going into the block wall because it was inside the block wall where it broke. And, uh, we, cause we pulled it out and it was that far in the block wall. And we got all that, we got all that taken care of. Um, where I was supposed to take a water sample today. Uh, he said, he told me, he said, do not take one until you've let that over chlorinate for a while to get the system back up to where it needs to be. And I have adjusted to where tomorrow a Wednesday is the last day we can take our chlorine, uh, our water sample, to get it back in when it's supposed to be. Um, I have, I'm going to take it tomorrow afternoon, get it mailed off. We are up to uh, about a 2.1 on our free chlorine, so we're back up where we need to be, where we were before this ever started to happen here a month ago. Um, but you guys will be getting a letter. Is when they come out, no matter what it is, they have to write a letter to KDHE and to the city because that's how, that way everybody knows what was went on and that way they can get paid. They get paid by the KDHE. And so they'll be, you'll be getting a letter and he strongly recommended that I make a couple phone calls and one was to the KDHE office because he didn't, he was not, he did not know whether or not they have been notified because they're not on the same thing. Julianne told me that they have been notified over there at that office. And that Alan, we don't have a licensed operator. Yeah, that we do not have a licensed operator. And um, Doug Githry is the guy's name from the Rural Water District Association. He gave me the number to the lady up at the Topeka that is the training person for all that. And I talked to, because he told me, he said, if you don't have anybody and something happens, then that's, he said, once that office over in Dodge smells blood in the water because of a problem, it, you almost can't ever get away from having that right over your shoulder. He said he's got two small towns right now that they did something to upset that office, and for the past five to ten years, they've been trying to make him happy, and they cannot make that guy happy. And so I said, well, that's good news. I appreciate that because that's something that if we didn't know, we could have turned into a situation. And so uh, Vicki uh, Wessel up in the office in Topeka, she said that uh, you can have an operator in training, and that would, that would, be, that would be me. It doesn't cost anything because otherwise you have to contract out an operator that's licensed to watch over the city, the water department, the sewer samples and stuff like that. If I have the op operator in training, it's free, it doesn't cost anything because you're already paying me anyway to be here and it allows us to be legal through that system are until you, we get a superintendent hired. Are you signed up yet? Well, I told him to email me this the information. So, because you can't just, you know, say put me on the list, you just <laughs> fill out an application and then, then you send it back. But, are, you, are you willing to do that? Oh, yeah. It does not bother me a bit to do it because I'm already here. There, if somebody comes in, chances are, unless you hire somebody who has built or been around one of those nitrate plants, they're not going to know half the stuff that in there that I know, which is minimal, but they're still not going to know that. So, um, but, uh, and then she also told me about the requirements to become class two certified. And she asked me, <laughs> she asked me if I had a diploma or a GED. I said, well, yeah. And um, she said, well, then all you need is one year of operating and like 14 points 
become class two certified. And when I talked to Eric over in the Dodge City office, I told him to go ahead and email me the list of classes that I needed to start going to now to have an idea of what I'm looking at when I see this stuff out here. Because in the event that it takes a couple, two, three, four more months to get someone in here, you know, we got to have somebody, and I, I don't feel, I'm comfortable in my ability to know when I'm out of my league, and that plant out there has a lot of stuff in it that I can only go so far before I have to start making phone calls. And because my best interest is that everybody has good clean water and that we don't have the state in here making my life harder than it already is right now. So we appreciate what you what you're doing, what you've done and what you continue to do. Just know that. I appreciate that. Just going back to the budget because we didn't have a regular budget meeting, so I changes mean, that we need, what, what, how we need to go about that. Um, get everything to Vicki. I'm going to try and get with LaDonna and see if I can meet with her this weekend and see if we can't get the budget put together. So if anybody's got anything, if they can get it to Vicki by Friday, that would be great. Anything else? Ruben, if you get go to any of the classes, you might see what it, if I can go, I you wouldn't can. mind going. You have to yeah. be you have to be employed by the city in order to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once you leave, you can't carry your certification. I have one for 25 years. As soon as I walked out the door, I lost it. Really? Yep. You must be employed here. That's kind of a Yep. It sure is. Yep. It's part of it. Will you get a paycheck? Yep. Don't qualify yet. Yeah. Come by in the morning at 7 o'clock, we'll put you work. Okay, is there anything else? 14, that's 14 hours. So, 14 points. But you want to adjourn. That's it. Sorry. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0.